And we're back with a little tutorial nugget on scheduling. This should hopefully be pretty brief because there's not a huge amount to do with scheduling, but it does have some very important features. The first is it's 600 seconds is an entire cycle. The cycle is broken up into 24 chunks and each one of those chunks is 25 seconds long. You have the option of downtime, which is when duplicants will use the bathrooms, eat food, shower, or do any of that stuff. Then you've got sleep time is where there's sleep and bath time. If there's no showers available that they just treat it as work. I've never bothered building a shower. So meh. now first things first, how does it actually work? Simplest thing we're going to do is we're going to find a duplicate that's about to head back to base. Now over here, we've got ourselves Vinny Van Doop and Vinny Van Doop is about to head back to base because if you look up here, you'll see that their schedule is about to hit downtime. The moment downtime kicks in, they say, oh, well, okay, they were, they got a little bit sidetracked by having to gasp for oxygen. They're going to decide it's time to head straight back and go to the bathroom. And are they going to make, oh, this is bad. They've made it to the bathroom, but unfortunately, I did not give them enough time. They should have a fort slot. Because they don't have enough time, they're going to get out of here and go straight to bed. They never had dinner. Well, that's a, ba that's a bad sign. So what we'll do here is we'll just skip forward and show you what should happen and how it should work. And right here we have Panthero, and Panthero was on the same schedule as Vinny, but now their downtime is about to kick in and I've given them one extra slot by adding in a downtime bar. So let's follow them back to base. It also helps that the construction project was a little bit closer to base as well. They'll manage to make it back, make it to the bathrooms. Now, here's the important bit. Once they exit the bathroom, so long as they still have any downtime slots left at all, they'll target their next location, which is go to go and get food. So when they leave the bathroom, so long as they have a little bit of green left, like right here, they would have been fine with just three downtime slots because they're now targeting the food. They'll go get the food. Now, nothing can stop them. Even if it switched to a nighttime shift, they'd still grab that food. Now they've got the food, it switches to nighttime shift. It's going to take them a little bit longer to eat because they missed their last one. And now the moment they're finished eating, if they're still in bedtime slots, assuming the bedtime slots are still active, they'll go immediately to the bedroom and go to sleep. Now, once they're in bed, that's it. They will not get out of bed again they will stay in bed until their stamina hits 100%. So if we were to say grab both those slots and turn them into work slots, notice the way, not getting out of bed. Panthero was like, no, I'm still good. They're going to stay there until their stamina hits 100% no matter what I do. Well, you can manually move them out of the bedroom. Would not advise it. And let's put that all back to normal. That's how scheduling works in a nutshell. There are several advantages to having multiple sh shifts. The first advantage is you can minimize your bathrooms. I have three dupes on each of these shifts, which means I can get by with three bathrooms apiece, and every single duplicate will have their own bathroom when they come back to use the base. This cuts down on the amount of infrastructure you have to build because the same bathrooms and sinks can take care of multiple duplicates. You only need to offset your duplicates by about two slots, usually. I haven't tried any finer than that. It might be possible to, uh, to offset them by only one slot, but mm, <laughs> do that at your own risk. So with that, you could make 12, 12 shifts, and with this one bathroom set up and, what, 12 shifts of four duplicates, 48, so yeah, about 48 duplicates on four bathrooms you could manage. That's very useful at cutting down on infrastructure requirements. Duplicates don't care what time of day or night it is when they're working, sleeping, or eating. They pretty much ignore the clock and the seasons as for any of those purposes, except for duplicates that have Night Owl or Early Bird. Their bonuses they get for if they're working during those time frames, they get a, a bonus to all their stats. It, it's a minor thing. You won't really care about it too much. But if you do have a duplicate with, that gets a bonus on night shifts, maybe have them work during the nights, that kind of thing. The main thing to be aware of with scheduling is you need your duplicates to have enough time to get back, to use the bathrooms, eat, and then get to the bedrooms. For that reason, it behooves you to design your base so that the bathrooms, food, and bedrooms are all in a very close proximity to each other. I've seen people storing food off in the, the corner of the map because there was a chlorine pocket there and it gave them perfect food storage. Yet that's going to mean you're going to have to add an extra downtime slot so your dupes can manage that walk back and forth, which is cutting down on your productivity. Keep everything nice and compact, and then you won't have to have too much downtime. The most downtime I've ever given my duplicates is four, but how much you give will depend on the size of your base, how far from your base your duplicates are working, what kind of infrastructure you have built. Do they have to take a ladder all the way back? If I was doing the same project up here, the duplicates could take a fire pole down, which would increase their returns rate by quite a bit. Um, if you had transport tubes net network in place, if you're using plastic ladders, what's the 
uh, athletics value of your duplicates. All of these things can play a factor in how long it takes your duplicates to get back to base and how much time you should allot them for downtime. The, all that said though, usually what happens is early game you'll only need two. As you start expanding a little bit beyond your core biome, you're going to go up to three. Once you go beyond the, the biomes touching that, you'll go up to four. At that point, usually your tech and the athletics and your duplicates is getting better and you really won't have to care. If you have newer duplicates and you stick them on a gym wheel to make sure that they're trained up in athletics, you should be able to keep everyone on the same four downtime slots and everyone will be able to get back in time to eat. Everyone will get back in time to use the bathrooms and they'll even have a little bit of downtime to usually use some of the facilities like a jukebox or something like that. Anything more than four, you're probably just wasting time at that point or you've got a really suboptimal design on your base or transport network. Anyway, that's schedule. Oh. Uh, one last thing, and it's a very, very useful little tip someone gave me. It was uh, Greed Theron in the comments comp pointed out, leave an empty default schedule. The default schedule is what all your newer duplicates will be dumped into. You can't change that. They will always be dumped in there. So maybe just leave that schedule with no one in it, uh, or with no one in it by default. That way you've always got an empty schedule to dump people into. Because if you're like me, you'll end up with not remembering to move your new duplicates out of that, and you'll end up with eight or nine duplicates in one shift by accident. Just a, a quick tip. Thanks again for that one, Greed. Anyway, I hope this was uh, at least mildly informative for you, and uh, good luck.